Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ibina's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's the beginning of June and so time for a new mood board and here it is for this month. Now, all of these photographs here on the mood board were taken in my garden throughout April and May um, and I posted some of these pictures on Facebook and a couple of people commented that, you know, it was a, it was a mood board. Um, so that's what I've decided to, to use for this month. Now, um, let me just hold it up so that you can see and let's maybe expand this lots of different options we've, we've obviously got lots of flowers because it's in in the garden we've got um, the wisteria and the clematis so whites and lilacs here we've also got the the bluebells we've got rhododendrons in um, sort of like a light pink a white and the um, deep fuchsia um, and we've got another rhododendron here, obviously white with a B going into the centre. So, you know, we've got bees, we've got um, we've got um, the hen here, or cockerel, whatever it is. This is just um, a piece of wire work. It's just um, a garden ornament. Um, and I really like all the rust. I like the colour as well, which is sort of like a green colour. Um, I like the texture, the pattern in that wire work as well. Um, it's also standing on a wicker basket again. You know, think of patterns and, and textures um, here not just the images themselves so there we go we've got the um, rhododendron as I say with the bee going inside um, the bluebells we've got the archway here looking out to the rhododendrons um, the wisteria um, on the balcony you can see the um, underside of the balcony here um, and also a feather that I found um, lying on the ground so you know lots of different options I think um, to take for inspiration for this month I'm using a piece of heavy cardboard food packaging as my substrate this week and you can see that I'm giving it um, a few coats of gesso. I want a nice sealed layer because I want to use some crackle glaze. So I think this is the third coat and I'm just smoothing it out now making sure that I've got um, a nice even surface to work on. And now that my gesso is thoroughly dry I'm applying some of the Deco Art Media crackle glaze. Now it's important that you don't overwork this glaze so I'm applying um, fairly even brush strokes. I start off from the left and then flip my page um, around and carry on adding the glaze to the other side. And then I leave this to dry naturally for about 45 minutes before coming in with my heat tool. Now once the cracking is really well established it's absolutely fine for you to finish the drying process off to speed things along with your heat tool. Um, I've achieved some wonderful wonderful crackle here and it hasn't been affected by drying it with the heat tool whatsoever. Now you can see that the cracks are larger in some areas than others. The larger cracks are where I've applied a heavier layer of the glaze, that's all. Now uh, you can see that I'm struggling to round my corners. I should have done this before I applied any of the gesso or the glaze because that cardboard really is quite thick and my punch um, is not really heavy duty enough for this. Now you can see that the background is very shiny at the moment. Of course, the crackle glaze is like a, a varnish. So to give myself a key um, before I start applying any colour, I'm using a small amount of watered down gesso just to go over the background. Of course, I don't want this um, layer to be too thick because I don't want to um, fill in all those gorgeous cracks. Now I'm using some eco-friendly dye um, ink pad re-inkers. Re the brand is Paris Trunk. I don't recommend these at all. I bought the ink pads and I ended up getting all my money back because they were just so dry. I just couldn't um, get any impression, but I've got the um, re-inkers left, left over. Um, so I'm just applying three or four different colours to my background. I think a pink, a purple, a blue and um, a grey. I've gone in far too heavy-handed here as you'll see when I activate them with with water I've used far too much ink <laughs> but you know me I can be way too heavy-handed sometimes so I'm just blending these out now with them um, with it with a paintbrush which I've dipped in water um, and then of course I realized that it's way too dark and um, so you know I just keep watering it down and taking some of that color off but it's revealed all those gorgeous cracks just look how pretty that is I've 
given it a quick dry and um, I've decided to go over it with some of my white um, furniture wax. I just love the effect that this, this gives and of course this lightens the background um, as well and just gives it a really lovely texture. Um, but then of course I can't stop, I decide I want to darken it again and this is where all the magic starts to happen, just you know adding layers, taking layers away, adding more. So I'm going over the background now with um, one of my Distress Ink pads in iced spruce. Um, then I go over in a, with a permanent ink in purple, and again I'm just rubbing all of all of that in. Now that looks a bit streaky at the moment, so back in with the iced spruce. And when this kind of thing happens, it's just a case of you know just keep adding and taking away until you end up with something that you're you're happy with. I end up absolutely loving all the texture that I achieve by doing this. want to grunge the background up a bit so I'm applying some black ink and you might be thinking oh my goodness me Nina stop stop it's absolutely beautiful um, in the end I just love this page so much um, and of course I'm just applying a border now as well absolutely love how this is looking so far although it ends up looking completely different by the time I've finished so I'm just applying another layer of that white wax finish and buffing it off um, and then I want to add my focal image the inspiration for this page was the feather from the mood board and the purple in the wisteria. Um, I've not taken it too literally. I'm using a peacock feather. Um, I'm using grunge paste. Um, in fact, it's called fibre paste. This is by Golden. Any kind of modelling paste will work through a stencil though. It's just that I really like the texture of the fibre paste because um, well, it's just really fibrous. fibre paste has probably had a good hour to dry and harden um, and I now have the urge to add some blue to my background so this is Amsterdam acrylic paint which I'm just applying with my finger and then rubbing off with a slightly damp baby wipe um, and I just love how that looks. Now you can see that I've already added some colour to my feather. Apologies, I forgot to stick the camera back on, um, but I just used the dye re-inkers um, and then brushed over it again with the damp paintbrush. So I'm just carrying on with that process, just you know, adding more colours. And this is where my struggle starts. I have, um, in fact, I absolutely love it at this phase, but of course me being me, um, didn't know when to stop. And um, I'm glad I didn't because I end up with a page that I absolutely adore um, and I wouldn't have that if I hadn't stopped it stopped here but it does take a lot of fiddling for me to get it the way that I want it. Now my peacock feather is looking a bit flat and dull and so I decide that I'm going to add some of the Pebio Studio acrylics but I overdo it in terms of the colours. These colours just do not work with the background at all. So I then end up adding some of the colour to the background and it just goes from bad to worse and I get really <laughs> frustrated with myself. Um, and I think it's good to show you this process as to how to fix your mistakes. You know, we're not perfect. We do things and things go wrong. Um, but you can use it usually rectify it somehow so you can see that I just keep going um, adding more and I'm still not liking it and in the end I turn the camera off um, and I just sit there and have a good play on my own without the pressure of the camera and you can probably tell that I've added some white paint and also some silver metallics and that has just toned everything down and I'm also adding some white paint to the background um, as well and now things are starting to look better. Now I am not going to lie, um, it's taken me quite a while to get this page um, to, oh, can you hear that plane? <laughs> um, it's 
taken me quite a while to get this page to this stage um, where I was actually happy with the colours of the feather and in the background and so I've just kept playing and playing and playing and I just love it. Um, it's taken me a lot an awful lot of fiddling. So all I want to do now is just frame um, my page. So I've got some black soot um, Distress Oxide ink here. So I'm just going to go all the way around the outside. Um, you could see that I was adding white paint as well because I just felt that the background was just a little bit um, too dark in comparison um, to the feather. But now I just absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. Um, I'm not going to go too heavy handed um, with the border because I don't want it to be too too dark again um, but you know you know I like to frame um, things and I've got the right amount of crackle I just absolutely love that there is so much detail in that page I just think it's beautiful um, so I just need to sort of think about what I want to do as um, a quote um, and put it in my journal so as soon as I've had a think about that I'll be back here's my finished art journal page I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with this you know there were times where I just thought I was never going to get this right and you know you've got that fear that you're going to have to end up starting again because it just isn't going the way that you want it to. I hear comments like this all the time in the Facebook group and so that's why I've chosen the quotes that I have. Creativity takes courage, replace fear of the unknown with curiosity and embrace the journey. And I think that's it, you know, don't be frightened that things are not going to, to work out. Just keep going. I just kept adding more and more and more until um, all of a sudden I thought, yes, that that's it. It just seemed to come together um, all of a sudden. Um, I am I'm really pleased with this page. I love the colours. I just love the black grunge, the crackle. It's just such an interesting page. And of course, I just absolutely love the colours that I've ended up with on my um, peacock as well. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, why didn't I reach for the um, Inca gold? Mine have all dried up. Let me... Um, show you I did end up adding some um, ink refresher and this has softened it ever so slightly but um, this was really completely set rock hard and they just weren't working for me so I really do need to you know try and fix these I've seen lots of tutorials of people sharing how they've revitalized their Inca golds and I've tried them and none of them have have worked for, for me unfortunately but you know I got there in the end and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it um, so I look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the mood board um, this month. I'll leave a picture of the mood board again at the end of the video and I'll also um, leave close-ups of, of this here as well. Um, you know feel free to interpret it in any way you like and if you enjoyed my video this week as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up because it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, so thanks ever so much for watching and take care everyone. I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.